body. But my flesh, if I let it control, will fight on the devil's side. Uh, can I help y'all? Turn to Romans chapter 8. We're going to read just a little bit. Amen? Uh, because, see, some of us, we think we're neutral, but we're really devil agents. Some of us been conspiring with the devil to kill ourselves. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if I am constantly focusing on fleshly things, if I am constantly going after fleshly things, the Bible said I'm actually chasing death. Alright. Uh, you 
said something real crazy about me. I have a choice to make. I can either cuss you out, tell you off, say something crazy back to you, or say something crazy about you. Now, if I'm going to operate ignorantly, which just means I didn't know. If I'm going to operate ignorantly, I'm going to choose one of those options. And I'm going to say, it don't matter no how. Because I'm not understanding this is a battle in my war. Are oh, y'all following me? Because my, my, my training manual called the Bible did not tell me to exercise those options. My training manual said, hold your peace. And I'll fight your battles. But I mean, I want to hold my peace right now. was tell you off. Uh -huh. But I didn't understand there's another scripture in the Bible that says you speak the wind and reap the whirlwind. Wow. I forgot there was another scripture that said whatever you sow. Yeah. And if you sow to your flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Wow. So see, I thought I was just telling you off. That's right. But really what I did was I lost the battle. Because I allowed the enemy to unleash corruption and death and a boomerang of what I said about you coming back on me in my life. That's right. Wow. I hear you. That's good. And so I think it's innocent. I think it doesn't matter. But everything I do, I'm either winning or losing a battle in my war. Wow. Some of us can't have the life God promised us because we keep giving the devil the victory. Amen. Understand this. The devil does not have the victory over any child of God, but on any day of the week, you can give it to him. Yes. And so you are giving the devil victory in your life. What's amazing to me is that uh, there is, in physiology and psychology, a phenomena that has been observed that occurs in the human body. Mm -hmm. And it is referred to as the fight-flight response. Uh -huh. I want y'all to get this in your spirit today, the, the fight-flight response. What that basically means is whenever a human is approached by something that they deem to be a threat, mm -hmm. that they deem to be uh, something that could come against them, the body begins to gear itself up to either fight or run. Now what amazed me is the body prepares itself the same way to run as it does to fight. Wow. It releases the same hormones. You feel the same surge of energy. Y'all know how it is. You know, uh, uh, a friend of mine, God help her, she has a flight response. She's a, she's a tall woman or whatever. And uh, we were walking out, we were co-workers at one point in time. We were walking out of work and um, the, the pesticide man was spraying the bushes. And you know, she, I saw him the day she had me. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, he's got his chemical mask and stuff on and we're walking, it's just, you know, it's getting dusk, it's almost dark. And we're getting ready to walk out the car and out the bushes comes this man in the mask called the evening ladies. Well, I, I knew it was the bug man. So I was like, hey, how you doing? I'm looking for my friend. She grabbed me. She fixed the pass out. And she said to me, she said, Shannon, she said, whenever I get scared, I faint. I was like, don't you never in life get scared around me? Because you have a flight response. You just check out whatever trouble comes. And I don't mean, you know what I mean? The kind of people I like to roll with, you know? Because, see, my, my natural response is to fight. Are you following me? So whenever I see something that's a danger, I start, can I tell y'all about your first lady and y'all don't think bad about me? <laughs> District missionary felt it was a church, right? And we were talking at the church and somebody had said something real crazy to me. And you know, for just about that moment, I forgot I was District missionary champ. <laughs> and so I looked and my earrings were in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> now all my ladies know what that means, right? <laughs> aware that I had done it, but while she was saying something crazy, I was yanking off earrings because, 
Yeah. <laughs> because my natural response is I'm a fighter. Yeah. Are you following me? But guess what? My body uses the same energy to fight as it does to run away. Amen. God, I hope y'all get this. So for me to make up in my mind that I'm gonna fight ain't gonna cost me nothing extra. It's gonna take the same energy that I have been using to run away. But some of us, we got a flight demon that just won't quit. We don't want to confront nothing. We don't want to address nothing. We want to put our head in the sand and act like nothing is going on. When the whole time the devil is killing you, your children, your husband, your sister, man, and everybody attached to you. But you're out here talking, it's not right. <laughs> Now, in my example, my girlfriend who has a flight response, she failed. I didn't get ready to fight or fail because I recognized he was not a threat. Mm. So whether I gear up to fight or to run is only triggered when I identify the threat. If I don't think I'm in danger, then I just sit there. Uh -huh. God, I hope y'all get this. And so what's been going on is, some of us, we haven't been running or fighting, mm -hmm. but we've been steady dying because the devil has tricked us to think there is no danger. Mm -hmm. So we walking around here and we say stuff like, he's just my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So you just sitting there getting killed because you never identified the danger, so you didn't run or fight. That's right. Jesus. Y'all mm. so rough people. A little such and such don't hurt. Mm. So you ain't running or fight. Because you don't think it's danger. Mm. See, see I ain't nobody excluded on today. Because see, some of us be like, I'm just telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're not running or fighting because you don't perceive it as a danger because gossiping about your brother or sister, even if it's true, is a threat. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Because the Bible says love covers. So if you're not covering, you're not operating in love. So remember, there is no middle. If you're not operating in love, what's the opposite of love? Hey. Oh, so you unleash hate in your life. Right. But I'm just telling the truth. No, you're not just telling the truth. You believe unleashing an uh, avalanche of hate in your life. Um, it's only one service that I miss. <laughs> no, you unleash the seed of disobedience when you sit at home and don't come to church and don't have a reason not to be there. That's because right. my Bible told me in Hebrews, forsake not the assembly That's right. of yourselves together, which means you can't assemble yourself together at home. T.D. Jakes can't to you. He can, he can preach to you, but he can't pastor you because he can't assemble you. That's right. I thought I get a lot of amens today, and I can't prepare not to care. <laughs> I can't even fight. <laughs> amen. <laughs> so, while you're sitting at home thinking, I just missed the service up to I'm tired. Really? Yeah, say it. Mm. Say that. <clears throat> you don't perceive it as a threat. I bet Jesus was tired when they started poking him in the side and putting nails in his hands and feet. But he didn't say, I'm too tired to do this. Y'all call me tomorrow. I'll catch y'all next week. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Every decision that I make is a, is, a, is, a, is a battle in my war. Every situation I face is a battle in my war. So in every situation that I face, I have to make a decision to respond spiritually and not fleshly. Because if I respond the wrong way, then I could be fighting in the wrong army. Right. That's right. That's right. And so I can't be long before y'all today. In our text on today, uh, the Bible tells us that David had a group of what I call, the Bible calls them his, his troop of raggedy men. Uh, his ragtag band of men. They weren't an official army. They were just some people who were trying to support David uh, during his time. And the Bible lets me know that there was this man by the name of Shammah. 
He was the son of A.G. And uh, the enemy, the Philistines, y'all know the Philistines, the same one that had the giant named Goliath. Y'all know the Philistines, that's like God's children. Um, the Philistines had gathered together in a troop, and there was this piece of ground full of lentils. Y'all know lentils is beans, okay? So uh, there was this little piece of ground where the people had planted some beans. And it was their little pea patch. It was where they had worked and they had uh, done some things to make a little harvest. Wasn't anything big. The Bible said it was a little piece of ground where the people had planted some lentils. And here comes the enemy. The enemy comes and the enemy says, I'm fixing to invade your pea patch. I'm fixing to take from you everything that you've been working on. I'm fixing to take from you everything that you've been plowing for and everything that you've been watering and every seed that you have sown. I Seed. I come to take it before you get your harvest. I come to leave you with absolutely nothing to show for every sacrifice that you've made, for every hour that you spent in this pea patch. And the Bible declares that the people that own the pea patch all ran away. Mm. But Sean. Mm. Sean said, hold on. Where are all other people? I don't know about all of them, man. Philistines, I know it's a whole troop of you all. Hmm. And it ain't nobody but me left because everybody else ran away. But but Shama said, oh no, I'm not going to just give you what God let me work for without sight. That's right. Yes. I know it doesn't look like much to somebody else. I know everybody else ran away. And the fact that everybody else ran away would lead you to the conclusion it's probably not much to this little pea patch. But Shama said, I see something in here. I see a principle of God. I cannot walk away from what God has started in my life because it's worth fighting for. So the Bible says he stood in the middle of the ground and defended it. And God gave him a supernatural result for his efforts. He did not run away. He did not act like the situation didn't exist. He knew that he was in danger. He knew that his livelihood was being attacked. He knew that his harvest was being attacked. And the Bible said by himself, he stood in the middle of that patch and he defended it. No, you can't have my peas. No, don't get your hands up for that. That does not belong to you. God gave me that and it's worth for you. I'm going to stay here. Places. 
therefore put on the whole armor of God. And he goes and tells you all about what your armor is. You know, you gotta have the helmet of salvation. You gotta have the girdle. Of, uh, you gotta have the loins girdled about with truth. You gotta have the feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. Gave me all of my outfit, right? So I get all dressed up, and I show up. I'm really almost finished. We gotta go home. Uh, I, I get all dressed up, and I show up. So I'm in my war clothes. And I'm on the battlefield. Uh -huh. What next, Shama? Well, I kept reading in Ephesians 6. It said, and having done all the stand, stand. stand. Oh, <laughs> wait, wait. I said, God, you mean standing is fighting? Uh -huh. <laughs> Ooh, y'all gonna get it in just a minute. So I get all dressed up. I stand in the middle of what God promised me. And I just stand there. <laughs> And God said, that's all you gotta do when you fight for me. He said, no, no, no. He said, let me tell you. He said, what's gonna happen is the Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Right? So, so so what happens is the devil comes in the middle of your promise and says, ah. Oh. <laughs> and most of us run. Right. You can't stand and run. That's right. There you go. The devil pushed most of us and we, ah! we fall out. <laughs> you can't stand and fall out. Yes. God, I hope y'all get this. Uh, so what happens is uh, the devil is coming and he's trying to make me bow down. He's trying to make me fall out. He's trying to make me go on his side in this situation. But if I can just stand on the word of God and don't move, I got the victory already. Yeah. I said, okay, God, I said, I got you, I got you, I got you. So what you're telling your people is, um, instead of you running away from what God promised you, whenever times get a little tough, maybe you ought to plant your feet in the word of God and stand. And I don't care how hard the devil pushes, I don't care how many blue tickets he sells, I don't care how loud that little woman be lying roars. I call him a woman be lying. Because the Bible said he's like a lion. He ain't no lion. Ain't but one lion. That's the lion of Judah. Why are you standing there? Why are you standing there? 